All right. Hello, Typology YouTube. Uh, this is the first video I've made in a while. Um, <clears throat> why is my voice softer? I don't know. Um, yeah, so title of this video is Why I Think I'm an ENTJ. Um, and yeah, I do a bit of hopping around on these. Uh, but I think that this is a pretty... I mean, I'm making this video because it's the most solid I've been on my type. Uh, so, brief overview. I'll be making a uh, another series of videos on the new definitions, somewhat new. Which definitions I'm using um, for this conclusion of this video of ENTJ. Um, so I'll do that, update the definitions videos, but uh, just to do, give a brief overview, I can get into why it is I think. I'm an ENTJ. Um, these definitions that I'm using are pretty, pretty standard. Um, I mean, they're not standard, standard. They're not. I can't point to like another um, typology group that's using these definitions, but I can. They're not like too far fetched. Um, so, what do I mean by ENTJ? I mean that I use extroverted thinking primarily uh, with introverted intuition, extroverted sensing, and introverted feeling less so. Um, so the evidence that I'm primarily drawing upon for this conclusion is um, myself during high school, or specifically at the end of high school. Um, excuse me. Um, so essentially what we see when we look at myself, senior year in high school, um, I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, um, my primary selling point as a high school graduate was my academic achievements, ac academic accomplishments. Um, um, yeah, you know, I was, you know, I don't know if you would use the word recruited, um, but, you know, essentially recruited academically from a variety of institutions of higher learning. Second to that, I had my basketball um, aptitude, my sports aptitude, um, oh, and by the way, and so, yeah, sports aptitude, um, had a couple offers to play Division Three. had a couple, basketball a couple places, um, and, uh, after that we had, uh, my, my, uh, kind of theatrical pursuits, which were, um, kind of competitive public speaking and acting, um, which I received no offers for because you don't really, well, I don't know if you could get, like, uh, scholarships for uh, wh what's called forensics, which is essentially uh, public speaking and acting. I mean, I, obviously there's the field of forensic science, but what I'm referring to with forensics is public speaking and acting, which was an activity that we had in my school. I don't know if they gave out scholarships for that. And honestly, if they did, I probably could have qualified. I got, um, I got to, like, the state level competitions, and I was a state finalist a couple years in the different comedic skits I do with some friends. Um, but anyway, uh, with that, um, what are those? So those are three activities. We have the athletics, the uh, academics, and the acting. Um, I would say that academics falls pretty squarely under NT, under intuition and thinking. Athletics falls pretty squarely under ST, or sensing and thinking, and acting falls pretty squarely under NF, or intuition and feeling. And what you notice is if you look at it like this, with, you know, academics at the top, and then NT on the top, NF and ST on the sides, they're like, oh, this guy's kind of like an NT type of character, he's primarily academically focused, and he has a smattering of athletic and um, theatrical, academic, storytelling tendencies as well. Um, so that's just saying NT, and it's actually saying, if you look a bit more closely, because sports was more of a priority for me than academics were, uh, no, that's not true, academics was more of a priority for me than sports, but sports more of a priority for me than acting. There were m numerous times where I almost just stopped doing, um, theater, I guess we'll just call it theater so people know what I'm talking about, um, almost stopped doing theater. Uh, just because I was like, eh, this isn't really doing anything for me, it's not super relevant, you know, it's not, 
I just wasn't, I was into it, I liked it, and I obviously, I actually ended up doing it all four years, but there were a couple, it was like my sophomore year, I was, I wasn't even taking the class, um, but, you know, there was a forensics group or a theater group that us, I'll just call it forensics group, I don't know what else, to, this is what I, I called it when I was in high school, forensics, uh, forensics group that had somebody drop, they needed somebody to fill in, I ended up filling in for that person, um, you know, but I was about to just not do it at all. Um, and then, yeah, so we're focusing on high school now, so that's it for high school. Um, with that, um, basketball or sports was much more consistent. Um, I never really considered stopping playing until college. Um, but, so that's, suddenly we see, like, okay, we what's the rankings of at least the top three or all four of the... NT, ST, NF, and SF, which wasn't really that prevalent. SF would be more like art, like drawing, painting, photography, stuff like that. wasn't too active in those areas. I had a couple pictures that um, were on the walls from art classes I took, but I wasn't super into those areas. Um, but uh, with that, uh, you can see NT, ST, NF, SF. Kind of like in the square, or maybe a diamond with NT over here, ST over here, NF over here, and SF down here. With that, I keep on saying with that. I don't know another way to um, connect these thoughts. Um, with that, um, you can see that there's a focus on NT and ST, which would be thinking, primary. And then the question is, okay, what kind of thinking is it? This is when we get into how I define extroverted thinking versus introverted thinking versus extroverted feeling versus introverted feeling. So I think the clearest way to look at this is to compare how I did the, the NF and the ST activities I participated in. So which is more extroverted, which is more introverted is kind of the question to ask, but that's not the whole story. Just what are the relative, relative to each other, what are the two functions on like the ST basketball sports side and the NF forensics theater comedy side? I think it's INF, or introverted feeling and introverted intuition, with EST, or extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking. And the reason I think that is because um, with, with forensics, you're the performer. There's no uh, external thing you're manipulating. You're not writing a book, you're enacting a book, and you're the tool that kind of gets controlled by your own, you by yourself to kind of act out a story. So you're kind of the uh, catalyst or the actor, actor, um, when you're performing. This is different from basketball. Sure, you're the player, but what you're actually controlling is the ball. You're controlling the ball and you're making it go through the hoop more times than the, and stopping the other team from putting the ball through there, from your hoop. Or, yeah, that's how basketball works. I should know this. Um, but yeah, it's like, are you controlling something outside of yourself with a J-E, or are you controlling yourself with J-I? Kind of like subject versus object. That's how I'm looking at it. So then we have T-E and F-I. And then we can look at, okay, well, what's the relative, which is the P-I, which is the introverted perceiving function, and which is the extroverted perceiving function. With forensics, I think it's pretty clear that it's... Um, Introverted intuition, because the script is in your head. This isn't like improv, where you're responding to stuff in real time and the script is emerging in real time. You have the script stored up here, and you're acting it out yourself. Um, whereas with basketball, there's not really a script. There's plays that get called, but you don't actually just go on the floor and start running a play. You can practice plays in practice for a given team, but your coach is going to call out different plays depending on what he thinks is the best, and sometimes you'll just play, and sometimes stuff will happen that you can't prepare for. So that's why I would say it's extroverted sensing as opposed to introverted sensing with basketball, because you're actually responding to stuff that's outside of yourself, and you're responding with extroverted thinking on the ball. Um, this is opposed to introverted uh, feeling and introverted intuition, which is more about um, controlling yourself in response to stuff that's inside of your own head. Uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, so that's why I think I'm an ENTJ, specifically T-E-N-I, 
the typology stuff is NI. I think NI is really just abstract internal awareness that includes like your mind, but it also includes like abstract recall, I think, but just internal mental abstract awareness. And that's kind of what this stage of my life is focused on after college is kind of getting a better sense of how my own mind works. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, hopefully that was clear enough. Like I said, I'll be making more videos describing the different functions and oscillations. Um, that's just a brief overview. Um, if anything wasn't clear, if you have any questions, or just you know, want to start up a conversation, feel free to leave a comment. Um, like and subscribe so you can... I don't know what liking does. I know subscribing allows you to... I guess liking just pushes this video up in the you know, YouTube algorithm. Subscription probably pushes my channel up. But, you know, subscribe if you're interested in this type of content you think it's, you know, informative and accurate or useful or helpful. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.